Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. I am the Soul Leader. Welcome, welcome. So really quickly, let me give you a quick message that the Lord had given to me. So I woke up and I came into the kitchen and grabbed my phone. It was 111, okay? When I see numbers like that, I know that there's a message for me because before I went to sleep and while I was at work early yesterday, I kept seeing 555. So when I see repeated numbers, I know that there's a message that the Lord is trying to speak to me and I need to pay attention. So I got home from work, you know, I did the usual. I did a meeting with um old co-worker on some things and then, you know, I tried to get my son to go to sleep and I fell asleep putting him to sleep. And I woke up, when I woke up at 111, instantly what came across my mind was something that I buried in the back of my mind a long time ago. And it was the same feeling that I felt more than once in some situations. And then I heard the word ignorance. And then I heard the word innocent. And a lot of the times when I would tell my testimony, I would always use the word innocent. And so the Lord said, how innocent are you? And then I began to write down what had happened to me that um, I never ever really talked about to many people. I might have said it's about one person. And that was one thing I buried in the back of my mind because I felt violated. I felt, uh, I felt like speaking up, I still wouldn't be, no one would believe me. And I told myself that, hey, I put myself in that situation, so whatever the consequence was, was I deserved. And that is so not true. Now, I'm not going to say specifically what that story was. You know, that's between me and God. But what I will tell you is that um, I labeled them when I wrote that down when something clearly was ignorance and what was clearly innocence. And um, so I wrote down a definition of innocent. And innocent has more than one definition. There were two that I found that would make sense with what I'm saying. Innocent means not guilty of a crime or offense. And number two, the second meaning of innocent is not responsible for direct, not responsible for or directly involved in the event yet suffering its consequences. And that's clearly what I've done in many situations and even in a situation when I was in a relationship with a narcissist. Um, yes, I was innocent, but I was suffering the consequences of something I did not do, even though I still participated in it. So that's where accountability comes in. People cannot hurt you unless you allow them to hurt you. And what I mean by the innocence is I noticed in all those situations how these people took advantage of my kindness because in their eyes, my kindness is the weakness. That's what the world teaches people, that kindness is weakness. But the Lord also teaches you that kindness is the spirit of the Lord. So people deem that as my, my, you know, my weakness. And then I wrote down the word ignorance. Ignorance means a lack of knowledge or information or awareness. And I also wrote that ignorance is a state of being. It's an adjective. It's a word to describe the state of being and lack. All right. So I labeled in that writing ignorance. So I came down to when I read in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, verses 13 through 16. And the Lord led me to this because I asked the Lord, I said, please give me a word to make sense with what you just put in my mind, something that I buried, but you pulled it up to uproot it so that I could continue on this healing process. Because when you're in the midst of healing, you're not healing just from a relationship. You're, you're healing childhood wounds. You're healing those things inside of yourself that you didn't know was there. And the Lord has dug in and uprooted some of these things for me. These are things that usually trigger me. But I wasn't triggered when I remembered this. Right then and there, I knew that there was a lesson behind why the Lord was bringing this back up to me. 
because this was a part of myself that I buried and um, the Lord has forgiven me from my entire past. So he tells me, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for those moments that even though you know you put yourself in that situation, but you still didn't deserve to be treated like that or taken advantage of. So let me read these Bible verses from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. 14. As obedient children, do not conform to